Okay, so this video will address the issues of several properties of waves, regardless of what kind of wave they are, they all have these properties. These properties are called reflection, refraction, and diffraction. You'll notice they're similar in, um, they're similar names, reflection, refraction, and diffraction. So make sure that you're aware of those similarities and make sure you're able to accurately identify which is which. All right, they are three different things. So I've got just a couple of pictures to represent each one. This picture right here is meant to represent diffraction. Um, in a sense, it's a little bit of a creative way of representing diffraction, but in any case, there is this lady is eavesdropping and um, waves travel in straight lines. So theoretically, with her standing here, she shouldn't be able to hear the sounds. They would just go straight past and she wouldn't hear them. But in fact, when things, when waves pass a barrier, they spread out to fill the gap behind the barrier. So we'll, well, you'll see more about that shortly. But the, she can hear partially, at least, because of the property of diffraction of sound. This picture represents, obviously, reflection in the surface of the lake. It's where waves bounce off of a surface. So light waves come from the mountain there, they bounce off the surface of the lake, and we can see them in their reflected rays. Then this one is called refraction, refraction of water waves. So these waves are all coming in toward this shoreline just like this. They're all like this, wave fronts, all, all lined up like that, right? All like that, and you can see them coming in here like this. But notice here where the water gets the water gets shallower, faster than it does over here, the waves actually change direction. Here the waves are coming this direction. I'll draw in a little arrow. They're coming this direction, basically. I right, just fixed the arrow there to be more accurate. So they're coming in that direction to the shore, basically perpendicular. Over here, however, they're not coming in that way. They've turned, and they've turned because the water is shallower, so they're actually going more like this over there. So you'll notice that the, they start out, all the waves start out going basically this direction up there, but they turn, they change direction over here in the shallower area. That's what happens to water waves. They refract, they travel at a different speed in a shallower region than they do in a deeper region, and that causes them to change their path slightly. They, they turn. So these waves kind of over here, they were going this way, bam, and now they enter the shallow water and they turn and they go this way. Sorry, going this way over here and then they turn and go that way when they get into the shallow water. Weird. Anyway, that's diffraction, or sorry, wow. That's actually refraction, refraction, refraction. This property is called refraction of waves. So here is a little bit more detail about what we mean when we say reflection. So we'll go through this pretty quick. Reflection is what occurs when waves change direction due to striking a solid surface. All right, so some waves of some variety strike the surface of an object and they bounce off. Um, we'll talk more about the way, exactly the way that works, but I'll mention it here. Um, when the waves are coming in at a certain angle, they will reflect and they'll reflect at the same angle that they hit. So this is a 45 degree angle. The waves are coming in here at 45 degrees, they reflect at 45 degrees. So it ends up being a right angle reflection in this case when you strike a 45 degree surface. All right. So the waves come in, the wave fronts come in, and then they, you can see right here, this part of the wave hit and turned already. Some of it is still continuing on, some of it already reflected. Here, a little bit more of this wave reflected. Here, the same wave, a little bit more of it has now reflected. Same wave, more. So um, basically, the waves reflect a bit at a time as they travel, and then part of the wave front turns and goes this way. That's the basic idea. Because it struck the solid surface, it bounces. If it struck, say, waves coming this way struck this surface, they would then just bounce straight back the way they came. 
That's about it for reflection. Reflection is pretty simple and straightforward. Refraction is a bit more complicated. Refraction occurs when waves change speed due to entering a different kind of medium. All right. So again, we have an example from a ripple tank. Um, here in this part of the ripple tank, we have deep water and these dark lines represent crests. The light, the bright areas represent troughs. So I might have that backwards, but it doesn't really make a difference. So we'll call this troughs and we'll call this crests. So there we've got waves, wave fronts traveling in this direction. We could draw in an arrow to represent the direction they're traveling there. All right, perpendicular arrow means they're traveling that way. So that's in deep water. Waves travel faster in deep water, so you'll notice that they're further apart here. The wavelength is wider in the deep water than it is in the shallow water. Right, so they slow down. A couple things happen. The waves slow down. They're slower in the shallow water than they are in the deep water. So this is faster, and this is slower. So the waves refract. What happens is they change direction, and you'll, it's not super easy to tell, but they have, they have bent a bit, just a little bit. So here we're going at a steeper angle, here a shallower angle. So the waves have changed direction, and they've gotten a lot closer together. So their speed has gotten slower, and the wavelength has gotten shorter but the frequency stays the same. So that's really important. Um, and it's sort of counterintuitive, but um, V uh, decreases in shallower water. So V decreases, velocity decreases. The wavelength decreases, it gets closer together. So velocity and wavelength decrease, but frequency stays the same, all right? So that's important. And that's possible if you remember because of V equals F times lambda. So if velocity decreases and wavelength decreases, then frequency can stay the same. All right, that's the idea of refraction. All right, our last concept is called diffraction, and that's when waves spread out on the other side of a barrier or hole, all right? And it's important that they, uh, there's one feature of this that I wanna make sure we talk about, and that's a wide gap versus a narrow gap, all right? But first of all, I just want you to get the idea that on the other side of this gap, say this is a barrier here, and there's a gap in the barrier, um, then the waves, you might think that they would just go bam through this corridor here and there'd be nothing in this part. That might be what you'd think would happen, but that's not what actually happens. So the waves come through here, and if this is a bit of a wide gap, then they do stay kind of flat in the middle there. They don't bend much. They don't bend much. But coming around the corner here, they curve. So the waves bend, they turn sort of circular, and they start to fill in this gap this gap on the other side of the barrier. They fill in that area. All right, so that's what happens. They, they come in here, wave fronts, straight wave fronts, and on the other side of the barrier, they curve. They become curved and they fill the area. All right, now if it's a wide gap, the waves stay flat, right? They're flat here, straight, flat. They stay straight and flat in the middle, but they will curve on the edges. All right, so just if I can make that a little bit more clear, it'll kind of look like this. Bam, flat there, and then curve there. If there is a very narrow gap, then you basically just get semicircle waves the whole way. They're just semicircles as they fill in the gap here. There will be less wave action in this area. So there is sort of a, like a cone area behind here. There's not much wave activity in that area. But in this area, definitely you get wave activity through here. Okay, so, and it's curved, semicircles, all right? So that's what happens with diffraction. The waves spread out on the other side of a barrier. This also happens if you have just a 
like a wall like this. Basically, here's a wall, and then the waves come in this way. When they pass the wall, they will curve to fill in that area behind the wall, but the rest of the wave will just stay straight. Right. And then curve to fill in behind the wall. That's diffraction. All right. Awesome. That sums up reflection, refraction, and diffraction that you need to know using water waves, but it would be the same basic idea for sound or light or any other kind of wave as well. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.